Welcome back, guys, and thanks for joining us again on Talk of the Town, Eurovision Town podcast. I am back, and this time I'm on my own. Rob and Neil are, well, they've not yet been furloughed, so they're still working technically. And uh, so I've been joined this time by, uh, you may recognise him, town fans. He is, of course, Ipswich Town's virtual FIFA manager. And that's Josh with a number of H's. Josh, <laughs> joining us today. How are you? Yeah, I'm all good, thank you. Good. How, are, you, are you staying well? Are you staying healthy? Are you uh, enjoying lockdown? Are you getting you know, time to play FIFA and really hone those skills? Yeah, um, it's weird because you haven't been like outside of the premises of your house for what four weeks now um but yeah i'm getting more time to play um to be fair which is quite good because obviously it's work and then exercise etc and then i maybe get a little space at home um uh, to play even during normal time every two three hours but i'm getting yeah quite a bit more sometimes now so it's oh, quite good to help practice is this a little bit of like normal life for you in terms of you know you're you're because of your, your, your approach uh, FIFA player is your house your business premises anyway normally so it's your normal sort of you know daily life still yeah um so normal life is kind of just getting up for work between like nine o'clock at uh, nine nine getting to work four nine and then leaving work at about somewhere between five and six as well and then go off I play, play quite a lot of tennis play that at kind of um county level as well I went to Wales with Suffolk at the end of February so yeah I take that as well quite seriously as well as my FIFA and wow <laughs> there's, a, there's a new fact for, and then, for you wow. yeah, and then uh, go to the gym as well um but then I get home maybe roughly for between somewhere seven and eight o'clock and obviously eat dinner, shower, etc. Um, and then that's probably about nine o'clock by the time that's happened. And then probably between nine and half eleven is my time to practice before but doing it all again the next day. About an hour and a half each day is, is the, the amount of time you get to practice on, on your FIFA skills. Probably, yeah, probably about two hours, two to three hours probably, if I can try and extend it. But usually, yeah, it's probably about that, an hour and a half to two hours. Right, so if, if, if we see you in the high street and you're looking a bit bleary-eyed, you know, it's because you've, you've extended that time and you've... Uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and you, you've, you've got that extra yeah. power in. Usually if I'm, like, feeling good, say, winning games um, quite a lot, then, yeah, I might be on a bit bit later just to... Well, let's talk about it. that in, in, in some more detail a bit later on. But first of all, obviously, you're wearing the famous blue and white, the, uh, you know... Yeah, exactly. It's uh, dynamite, as the, as the song goes. How did you fall in love with, with Ipswich Town? How did you become a, a town fan? Was it something you, you chose or was it a, a family tradition? Because mine was a family tradition. I was born into it. How yeah. I, yeah, from memory, I believe it was the same. Because I think I got told, because I can't remember, I got taken to my first game around five or six years old um, to watch one of the games. And then I remember... And then I remember kind of watching the games, having a season ticket from about when I was eight years old onwards. So it's like a sort of family thing. Um, but yeah, I was, I sat in the co-op stand, which is now called the old Britannia stand, um, for about eight years old to about, I think, 13, 14. And now I've moved over to Sir Bobby Robson stand uh, as of yeah. a year ago as well now. So, so you're, yeah. you're in the exact same stand uh, as my normal cohorts, uh, Rob and Neil. They are, I believe they are section two. So it, go, it goes one to six. I'm cobbled stands because I'm, I'm, I'm an old fuddy-duddy. All right. So, you know, <laughs> you know if, if, if we make noise, you know something has seriously gone wrong or there's been a serious injustice on the pitch. Cobbled Massive on Twitter will hate me for saying that, but it's the truth. Uh, so I think six is near us and one... Yeah. Opposite, so they are number two, I think. Are you, where, whereabouts in? Are you up lower? Um, I'm in lower. I'm in section six. Ah, so you're you're my sort of end. Okay, cool. But yeah. I know, having been in the in the, in the, in the north stand, as I would still call it, being old, uh, you can all get down. And it's I've seen some great YouTube videos where the atmosphere down there is is particular. Yeah, 
that that's what I really like about it. The atmosphere is absolutely great. Just to get behind the team as well. Yeah. In that sort of way, as well as it's worth watching. I yeah, it's good just to provide that noise for them, just to spur them on. Absolutely. So of course you know our colleagues of mine, uh, uh, Ashley Simmons fan zone, Mark Bear. Yeah. Yeah, you bump into those quite regularly down there. I imagine. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, I've. Yeah, I sit next to. Um, well, it's fans I actually, um, where you call him, it's, yeah, I sit next to him, so yeah. <laughs> I call him fan zone Simmons, I mean, I, you know, I've, I've seen him obviously around, I mean, down there these days, like, who's, who isn't it? You've got, you've got themselves, you've got, uh, you've got Nick, is it? Uh, Nick Miller, uh, who's the other chap who does some of the, the video sort of things for, for YouTube? Um, gets his family involved quite a bit. Uh, I th- uh, there's Alex Griffin, who's in Section Miller. 5. Yeah. yeah, he's in section five. Um, fans are in section six, and we're six. Um, so between the, the three of us, we're kind of getting it all the whole North Stand yeah. covered, isn't it? So, exactly. if you pick out a, a game that was your favorite, and that could be any point through throughout your fandom so far, and then there's you know, I appreciate for yourself, maybe you know, I'm I'm 30 now, so I've seen Premier League days, etc. Um, yeah, they might not be the same, but. What what would be your absolute, you know, oh, yeah, that was my favourite moment or favourite game or is, is the most... Uh, is that, I mean, I've got... Uh, I'll probably have to bring one out from days I sat in the cult when I was younger and from now, but I've got quite a few. Um, that famous night against Arsenal, I don't think that can ever get forgotten. Colin Healy putting that free ball to Priskin. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, I was going to ask you this, Colin Healy. Now, is that a through ball or is that a clearance that just happened to bounce the right direction? Uh, it, it might have been. It, well, well, yeah, we'll say it's a through ball. But it was more of a. Obviously, he got his toe in the way for an interception, and it went through. But <laughs> we'll, we'll give the guy credit and say it's the through ball. <laughs> um, yeah, he didn't do yeah. much in his career, but what he did do was, uh, you know. Nah. Obviously, was... Colin Healy's famous for two things, isn't he? That 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 through ball stroke challenge and getting subbed off before half time and uh, one of Paul Jules. Uh, last yeah. Games. <laughs> Poor guy. See, that was a memorable night at Portman Road, to be fair. Absolutely. Oh, we've lost Josh. Oh, hold on. Yeah, you okay? This time. There we go. Let me. Uh, what about so uh, yeah we go yeah, I can edit that bit out so uh, okay. we just uh, go so that was obviously the favourite night at Portman Road has there been yeah. a favourite favourite game involving other, another club that you can you, that you've seen live or seen on the TV that stands out to yourself for me uh, uh, it's the 1999 Champions League final for Man United uh, I, I, I wasn't particularly old at the time, but I remember it because such a, an iconic yeah. comeback uh, that was yeah. didn't bury for so long. For uh, myself, um, you've obviously got the most recent one that Liverpool have done, the comeback against Barcelona. That was a crazy game to watch, followed by Spurs doing the exact same the next day. Um, not by the bigger scoreline, but still with the comeback. And then... Ajax, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, because that, that game, that, that still perplexes me because the goalkeeper's got a goal kick with 20 seconds left. And yeah. 20 seconds later, Spurs score. I mean, that's just... It's incredible. Yeah. I know. that. It, that's what... I mean, it's Champions League is crazy, to be fair, with comebacks and score and stuff like that. It's, it's the best competition, to be fair. Do you feel the Champions League could be improved by... Uh, Restricting it to purely champions of of the top leagues, or are you a a Champions League fan that would like to see you know second and third still brought in, but maybe less clubs from other countries where their leagues aren't as competitive, you know? Because yeah. in the early group stages, I mean, you had that obviously the famous one recently with Man United, and I think it was a team from from Belgium that knocked them out in the group stages. But normally it's a formality, right? And it's kind yeah, of yeah. Usually, you get 
maybe one or two groups of death where you've got, say, Barcelona, Dortmund, and say, I, you've got three big sides, to yeah. be fair. Yeah, I but I don't know what pots, like, and Man United as well, because you can't have too many pot ones, obviously. Uh, but, yeah, it's, it's a difficult one, because... Like you have one or two groups of death where one big side would go up, but usually, yeah, you have say your Real Madrid and then your Man City, then you've got Luda Goretz and then like teams you've never heard of, and then they're never going to beat them, are they? So it's uh, kind of, and also not teams that normally finish third to go into the Europa League, uh, which I don't agree with, by the way, because I think I feel that's rewarding failure and punishing Europa League teams, yeah. Yeah, no, exactly that. Yeah, because it most... should almost maybe an extra one in the Premier League and then extra in other bigger leagues as well to give like those sides around there, like your Everton's and currently your Sheffield United's, uh, your Wolves, to just get a Europa League spot. Yeah. And, and, and then... obviously teams like Ajax would still... Because I, I hear people already on Twitter saying, well, teams like Ajax wouldn't, wouldn't obviously be amongst those necessarily because the, the Dutch league isn't the strongest. But if you've got a pedigree in that in in that competition, that's different. That's that that is always yeah. you're you know you're obviously will keep the Dutch sides coming in. I'm talking, you know, ludicrous like, as you just mentioned. You know, I mean, when's the last time they reached the last last sixteen, last last even thirty two? Hello, I'm mean, I'm not a Champions League purist. I'm just thinking of I love yeah. like Ajax, Spurs, Barca, United, the top teams. That's what I want to say. Is a a town fan watching League One football, but I want yeah, to watch top teams going toe to toe, not you know, not uh, Olympiacos versus Porto. No disrespect to either team, um, you know. Yeah, you want to see those bigger names bring out some some sort of class in there that just makes you go, wow. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because in turn, it, it should make the Europa League better, right? Yeah, exactly. Because those teams will then drip down into the Europa League to start off with and that'll be a whole lot more competitive because let's face it I might be wrong when I say this and you may challenge me on it most people who watch the Europa League are either pure football enthusiasts or you've got a club that's already in there that, that's yours you yeah it's not, a, it's, it's not a game that you you normally would seek out on the, the TV schedule right it's not like a, oh we've got you know two two teams going at it that have finished sixth and fifth in their leagues respectively. It's not like a... Am I wrong? Or, or is, is, is Europa League something you, you often try and tune in for? Or Yeah, to be fair, I don't... Compared to Champions League, I don't watch any Europa League. Maybe for an English side, obviously it's getting further on. But obviously you pay attention to that. Like Chelsea and Arsenal did last year. They met in the final. Hmm. And you kind of watch their semi-finals and like, I think it was a penalty shootout Chelsea had. Like tuned into that game throughout, and then obviously ended in penalty shootout, and then Arsenal won, and then to watch the Chelsea Arsenal game because it's two English sides going at it for some silverware to be Europa League champions. So yeah, watch a bit, but Champions League's a lot more because some of these ties you get in the quarterfinals, like Dortmund versus PSG, for example, which was in the I know it was behind closed doors, which isn't the same behind the fans, but those sort of teams playing each other is crazy like Haaland versus Mbappe that's it's just that, crazy yeah that's what you want to see that's that then yeah they, those are the things you want to see but you, you don't want to see Michael Dawson versus <laughs> whoever do you know do you, you know I don't know yeah so when you are obviously you are a pro FIFA player you are ranked um where are you ranked in the world uh 257th Wow. Now, see, now, now that is, now that's incredible because how many FIFA players over the world must there be? At a rough, at a rough guess, unless you, unless you know. I I don't know how many like actual FIFA players there. I know there's competitively like around the world who like tr just play competitively is about twenty million, I think. Um, there's there's a lot of people that what? twenty million. Yeah. Wow. And you're you you are inside the top three hundred. Yeah. That's worldwide. That's not just UK, that's worldwide. No, that's worldwide, yeah. Flipping. Jesus. Wow, okay. Um congratulations, I suppose, you know, that because that's that's incredible. That's um so how did you get into being because Rob Davies, who is my colleague uh, co-host on this show, he is a mad, mad, mad FIFA player. 
Um, if you yeah. can't get hold of him, he's either working <laughs> or playing FIFA. Um, whereas I'm more of a football manager fan. I'm more of a, an FM fan. Yeah. How did you become a... When did you decide that you'd be a pro FIFA player? And how did you become one? <laughs> uh, it was kind of just... I played it, obviously, with school, with mates, stuff at high school. Um, and to be fair, I wasn't the best. Um, I used to get beaten by my mates quite a lot now. Um, and it was, yeah, wasn't great because you'd lose four, five, six nil. And I was like, I just can't uh, take this because I was always the one. Been there. Yeah, because I was always the one that, yeah, used to get the abuse and stuff like that for losing and stuff, saying that how it. bad it was. So I thought, I'm not having this anymore. So I thought, I'll try and play more to try and improve myself. Um, and then I saw the first competition, like the first major competition that uh, FIFA ever had. And I thought it, it looked like such a good competition. And I thought I need to try and get to one of these things as well as, but I need to obviously beat my mates first and then try and move on to uh, get to one of these competitions, hopefully soon. And yeah, over probably the next year I was just playing and I was like there's competitions that I found which I started entering um, and I started doing well against um, kind of people my own standards so I started moving not obviously to like the top echelon of all the players but started getting near there um, and then probably I'd say over the past year or so I've kind of moved up into that sort of bracket of higher players um, I'm still yet to obviously break into the top 100 and stuff but I've kind of got myself onto that peak where I can push on, say, into the next FIFA uh, to try and push into that maybe top 100, etc. cetera. Wow. Um, and now my mates, yeah, it's probably the same scoreline, but to me now, so that's quite good as well. It's always an added bonus. Plus, of course, you're, you're, you're seen as somewhat of a, of a scalp if they manage to beat you because they're, they're beating a pro <laughs> FIFA player, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly that. I can already yeah, hear um, Rob thinking... I, you know, I want to challenge him. I want to challenge him because Rob yeah. backed himself as a bit of a you know decent player. He really does, and uh, he he won't have you. He won't tell you this, but I beat him once, once, <laughs> and I do bang on about this one time I did beat him. Freddie Sears, uh, for West Ham at the time. That shows you how old the game was then. Uh, yeah. But where do you find these tournaments? So where did you first? Where do you find them now? Where did you find them then? Where did you find the tournaments to to take part? So. I, on Twitter, there's sometimes quite a few that pop up on my timeline from people who I follow, but the main ones are ones that EA actually put out, right. um, like these major tournaments. So it's kind of announced on EA's website, um, these like major cups, and then there's some like minor cups, which are found on like competitive gaming websites and stuff like that, which do different uh, competitions, different things, some for money. Some for like contracts and stuff like that. So it's nice. Yeah. Nice. And when you when you practice, I, I'm I'm gonna go on a limb here. I'm not, I don't play FIFA a whole lot, but when I do, the match engine when you're playing the computer can be somewhat com, you know repetitive. So are you practicing against the computer or are you practicing against online people because that's a bit more random and you're not quite sure? Yeah. You, how do you it's, practice? Yeah, it's always online um because the computer like it they when you compete it's always against um other people so and other people defend and attack much differently than ai and ai is the exact same kind of like the computer sorry as such is yeah the same sort of thing but yeah online i've practiced online all the time i haven't played the computer probably for a couple of years now to be honest um but yeah i practice online usually against people my own standards i have a kind of a group chat on twitter it's about 40 45 of us in there all kind of the same standards so we usually practice against each other in there to improve or there's a game mode online where you can practice against you can just search for a game and it'll be against a person with kind of the same skill rating yeah actually you build that up since the start of fifa so now we're kind of all at your certain skill level you just search into that and you play someone which is roughly your same standard which is good practice yeah so roughly the same sort of uh, thing as i play a lot of nfl madden online and uh, i like to rate myself on that quite highly and uh well so does the automatic search so yeah it's a bit similar like that you're categorized and you're you're kind of put with each other 
Um, and then you're asked halfway yeah. through, right? If you're winning by too much of a scoreline, you're asked halfway through, you're obviously too strong for this player. Do you wish to continue or do you wish to... Is, is the same sort of thing with FIFA? If you're winning by, uh, by, by quite a considerable scoreline, do they ask you? No, but to be fair, it, it's not asked. It's uh, Obviously, there's the forfeit match option, but yeah, um, it's, to be fair, that's not, that isn't in FIFA, to be honest. Right, so I've sometimes been, been up by considerable amounts of half time, people still haven't quit. So, yeah. So I imagine you get quite a few raid quits. Yeah, no, I've had it. I've had a few. To be fair. Yeah. So, what's your yeah. highest? Your highest win? What's your highest win? If you can remember. Your uh, I think it was. I think it was eighteen nil. I think. Gosh. Okay. Wow. <laughs> wow. Fair enough. Yeah. And, you're, and I, 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 as of after the, the win, I've got to go for the defeat. Your your highest defeat. Nice defeat. Before or during your pro FIFA days, you know, if you you can you can pretend it was before uh, you you went pro. <laughs> yeah, like before it that was probably about to be fair, before it was like playing mates, it was like six, seven nil. Uh but kind of these days it's still better than me. I'd say my lowest would probably be in about four nil. I'd say it's the worst I've lost this year, which to another competitive guy, so yeah. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I think I I think Rob's beaten me by double digits a couple of times. I can't be honest. And I think he was. I think he, I think he'd like to tell the story that he was someone like Chorley and I was someone like Barcelona. But I don't think that was the case. I don't think. But that's how bad <laughs> of a player I am on FIFA. I am. I, I am not good. I have to be honest. I don't play it enough. You see. But and I think it's the sort yeah. of game you've got to play again and again and again, right? Yeah, no, it's one that you've got to play quite a bit to obviously improve at, to then kind of find the right skills. I feel once you have the right skills, it's, yeah. And what are the right what skills? Is what, what is the perfect game plan in FIFA? So probably the best one, because I think everyone's quite good at attack. Everyone that I've played um, online as well, who might be, say, a casual player as well, sometimes everyone can attack, it seems, but it's all about the defence. Because the defence, I think, is a lot harder than attacking on FIFA. Because I think everyone can kind of get an idea of attacks, going for goal and stuff like that. Because you have your skills and stuff like that. People can try it. But obviously, defence, you've got to track players and know when to intercept at the right time. So, I'd say, defend, being a top defender is a lot better than attacker, yeah. to be fair. So, so obviously, you... guard that goal. Sorry, go on. Because, yeah, if you don't concede goals, you're not going to lose matches as such, are you? Um, and usually in the end, I'll try. I'll end up scoring, so you, you end up getting the win anyway. But being defender, maybe conceding one or two goals a match, at, obviously at the very most. Um, yeah, you'll usually get the victory. But I'll, yeah, I usually keep quite a lot of clean sheets, so that helps a lot. At one point, there, I thought I was talking to Mick McCarthy. When you, uh, if you don't concede many goals, you won't lose. I thought, hang on, is Mick McCarthy walked in the room? Nah, you've got to score plenty of goals. You've got to score plenty of goals along with it as well as... But yeah. you, you never want... Because previously, when my defence wasn't good, I'd maybe win like 7-5, which I think when it comes to competitively, you're never going to get that many chances to score seven goals. Um, so you've got to keep your defence at a minimum, but try and score as many goals with it as possible. And is there a particular tactic that helps with, with that or a particular tactic that you like to play with? Um, it's kind of maybe a slower build-up play. It's kind of the sort of way I like to play. Kind of a bit of possession, but a bit, bit fast as well. It's, it's weird. I play a bit of both, so I can either play quite slowly and build up, but I can play almost a bit counter-attack, but like tick-attack or one-touch passes as well to get through. Um, and defence, again, the same. I can pressure up high, but I can sit deep and wait for my right chance. So I, I kind of do both quite well, I think. Are you, are you a four four two guy or a three five two or um, three three? I'm a, I used to be a four four two, but I've switched in about November to the four two three one. Okay, yeah. Why why the switch? What do you feel that gives you over the four four two? I felt it gave me a lot more balance in defence and attack because four four two was very attacking, which I liked. But the men to get back, so they were both centre mids. They wouldn't come back as much, so it was kind of four against. Their attack, whereas 43 on gives me six men behind there. But then the attack, 
as well. Those CDMs I've got to push up. So there's six up in attack. So it's kind of really balanced. You get six players up in attack, you get your six players back in defence. Right. And the attackers will generally come back in defence in this formation as well. Whereas four four two, the two strikers tend to want to stay up. So I find it kind of just is more compact, but it gives me options because CDMs will sit nicely on the edge of the box. And then the other four can cause mayhem in the box. Nice. So do you do you often watch back your own your own footage to 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 create yeah. you know, critique it, maybe technically and uh, look at it and see where you could have adapted it and things like that. Yeah, no, I do exactly that. I have you looked, have you looked back the defeat in the in, in the cup game to? Yeah, yeah. Did you look? That, obviously, we've, we've got to touch on that. You know. Um, yeah. Well done for first and foremost being given the role um, and giving it a good go. I watched that game. You, you were in it for large parts. Where do you feel uh, it kind of went wrong for? Just so, yeah, so the first, I kind of went into the game and went out to play, but it was a chance I never thought I'd ever get no. to play for Ipswich because I've participated uh, in the Premier League before, but I thought it, we're in League One currently, so it's going to be at least two years at the very mo- at the very least, sorry, to, before we even get somewhere like that. So I thought it's unlikely we're going to, I'll be able to participate in that. Obviously, for the next two years and two years, a long time plus, it'll probably be a lot more with us, obviously, with the season in uh, jeopardy as well. Um, but yeah, I obviously got given the role. And then I went into the first half and I just felt, I know, quite nervous. And I, I felt it kind of affected my game. So I usually feel nervous during my competitive games. It helps me concentrate. But in this one, I felt it made me quite defensive, quite slow. Not really, not sure what's doing attack. And he obviously went 1 0 up um, in the first half. And at that point at half time, I thought, fair play, I'm getting outplayed here, but that's not what I've got. That's not all I've got. I know I can play a lot better than this. But he's a, I'm not losing to anyone particularly bad because he's a competitive player as well. But I know I could do a lot better. Um, and then I think it was within five minutes, I think, um, I managed to find a ball over the other side of the pitch, crossed it to Jack Lancaster, who scored. And done the exact same. And and then literally a couple of minutes later, again with Caden Jackson, I, I think I hit the post or I had a close save in a couple of minutes. Post, I think, if I remember rightly, it was the post, yeah. So I thought, okay, yeah, this is a lot of my, me. I'm kind of getting on the front foot here. Because um, I watched back his stream and I think he changed some tactics in that one in order to help because I was getting him a lot. I was getting him behind quite a lot. Um, so yeah, that was tough. But another thing that, Probably that I've, I maybe probably could never plan for. I thought I could have, but I couldn't. It's playing an Australian online. That was probably one. That's the toughest thing I think I've ever had to do to play. Was there a lag? Was was, was there yeah. a lag? Yeah. It it was it was weird. It wasn't like a lag as such. It the game felt smooth. Like it didn't like stutter. But when you press a button, it's done within milliseconds. On the games, you press it, you play it, pass it. But on this one, it took maybe between one and two seconds. And it doesn't seem that much. But if you do the time difference oh, again and press the button, yeah. it makes a huge difference, which it did. Because usually when I'm playing people online, it's... Um, yeah, it's... Yeah, it's this country, yeah. You're, it's done within milliseconds. Like the ping... Um, that I usually play on is between like 30 and 40, so 30 and 40 milliseconds. Um, the pass is registered or something like yeah. that, whereas with this guy, I don't think the ping could even register because we were that far away. So it's over 500 already, but it felt between like one and two seconds. It, was, wow. it, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't ideal, really. So that took a while to adapt. So you had to kind of think ahead of your attack. That's, that's tough. Having played Madden, you know NFL Madden online, I, you know you say two seconds it doesn't. Two, I think anybody who plays anything online will know two seconds is. It doesn't sound long, as like you've said, but it is a long time. And one of the hardest things is starting to think ahead. Um, you're then not only battling the game or, or or the player, you're battling your own your own mind because you, you can't get too yeah. involved in that. You know because you've got to think right, okay. Keep looking ahead. Keep looking ahead, and it's it's difficult. It's just a fast yeah. sort of game as 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 FIFA is. 
Yeah, exactly. So I couldn't. I had to play quite slowly. I had to adapt my game to almost, almost just like walking about a bit. Because if you're sprinting, sometimes if you wanted to stop from that sprint, that would take a while for it to register. Yeah. You probably go into a defender. So I had to adapt it that way, which I did, and and then I had a few more chances, and it finished one all. So I felt quite good. Um, I had a look at some of my mates' comments who was watching just to see what I was doing and they said you're all on top here just keep going and I'm sure you'll get it which I had the penalty um, which I was yeah it was a difficult one because you could see a bit of head movement um, whilst taking a penalty um, so I was just trying to go to the right to go to the left um, I didn't move over quite enough to the left which was a bit disappointed so I went middle um, which got saved um, and then I went one nil up. He scored straight away. I went straight back to 2-1. And then obviously I went 3-1 up, which I thought was a great three ball to Norwood, to be fair. I was quite happy that I cut his defence open like that from a long way. Um, and then it was kind of my own fault because I play out the back quite a lot. So I kind of like to pass out the back. But I realised in this sort of game, I kind of needed to maybe, it's a bit of a weird one, but stick Will Keane and then maybe another hold up player out wide because I can then stick it out wide and maybe launch it out wide to someone like Will Keane who will win a header yeah. or something like that or hold it up at least in a wider position just to get it out because I can't have the position to pass it out because of this sort of delay in passes um, which when I conceded from 3-1 to 3-2 two was exactly that. I was trying to pass out the back and then pass it to the completely wrong guy so is that um, something you can learn moving forward? Should you have this opportunity or have a have a game where you're playing somebody a game where it's a bit of a lag? Do you look to go a bit more route one? Do you is that something you can take? Yeah, you, you know, you've learned no, from that now. And you can... Even though yeah, even though I have lost it and it was extremely annoying. It's every match that I lose is annoying. This one hurt the most. Yeah, too fair as being a town fan, but it's important to learn something from every match. Even it's just one thing that you do, and in that situation, it was that that I needed to maybe not play out the back as much in this sort of situation um, because of that delay. And because he, I look back at his stream and he turned on like team press tactic, which it takes a lot out of your stamina. But obviously, for the last twenty minutes that we were in, it's kind of worth it. So I was getting pressured by the AI as well as him, so I had to kind of play out the back um, and launch it forward. Rather did than you, trying to pass. Out. Did you pick up his tactical changes from your end while playing? Yeah, I did. Uh, not from the first one, because I thought that's my mistake. I shouldn't have done that. And then at 3 0, I recognised he had a lot of bodies forward. Um, and then at 4 3, to be fair to me, it was a nice ball in behind, um, which he scored. But I felt, I look back as well, my tactical changes probably wasn't the best. I, I've been talking about this a lot. I'm in an R in whether I should have done it, but it's. I changed to a 5 3 2 because he liked to cross a lot. And I thought if I can. I told those three centre midfielders to stay back. So I've got, in theory, six people in a small block in the box. So I thought if he's crossing, I've brought someone like Scoose on with a bit of height and a bit more defensive ability so I can get those balls out, head of them out. Um, but it was. I think it was the wrong tactical change because uh, it seemed to bring on more pressure for some reason even though five backs may be more defensively stable than a 4 3 one So that's maybe one thing I sh maybe shouldn't have done. But then, arguably, if I stayed 4 3 one and it had the same effect, I thought, why didn't I just stick an extra man in defence? Yeah. So it's a, it's a difficult one. You're damned if you do. You're damned if you don't in that situation. You know. But you, you, you gave yourself an incredible platform after you know, a bad sort of first half, as you, as, as you alluded to there, to go on and, and get something. And... Hey, it's, the, it's one of our best opening cup rounds, even though we got beat. You know, it's one of the best opening cup rounds we've had in a, yeah. in a long time, you know. So, is there more opportunity, do you feel, to work with the club? Have the club said anything to yourself? Is, is there more opportunity? Um, we obviously, I obviously played against some of the fans. Um, I just wish there would be some sort of other competition to try and get myself into, uh, FIFA wise, um, to try and prove myself again. Um, and hopefully this time, I'm not saying I'll get through the first round again, because again, there's a lot of competitive guys in the UK and in Europe. But I'd like to have a almost a fair shot at it 
and play someone within Europe where you're it's a kind of a normal game as yeah. such whereas that one is it was a lot different to what a normal game is because of I had to adapt quite a lot and it's not really the norm playing someone from Australia do you know how he did yeah. do you know how he did in the subsequent rounds do you know if he went I think uh, I remember watching it I think he lost two or three one in the next round to the guy but the next guy was from France so obviously for myself I won that that's uh that game would have been absolutely fine as well so it's disappointing but again I looked at the draw and by the looks of it like my side of it like from where I came from was the hardest possible draw pretty much because there was like a group of like four of us which yeah that was the hardest point possible because I think the next guy he's won some sort of French title national title so that's who I would have been placing the second guy, I'm not too sure. But then I think it's the PlayStation 4 world champion of 2018 I would have played in that one as well, followed by a guy who's currently top 50 this year wow. as well. Wow. So it, wow. it, was, a, it was a tough time because I wish... Because there were some sides of the draw where you maybe played a footballer or a casual fan, which would have been quite an easy brush over. I'm not saying I couldn't have won all those rounds, but against those sort of magnitude of people over time, it's it was difficult. It would have been nicer to maybe play, uh, say, a lesser ranked player in the first round just to get everything settled, then followed by a tougher opponent. But it's kind of luck of the draw, I suppose. In a way, you must be really kicking yourself, though, because what a great opportunity to take on the calibre of player and really test yourself. Uh, you know, and let's be honest, we're, we're town fans. We're not the greatest team in the world. And FIFA is based on team rankings and things like that. So exactly. what a great opportunity to really test your, your own playing ability against yeah. you know what what you're telling me is real bona fide top players yeah exactly especially yeah those next rounds yeah they weren't against any sort of people they were against top class people yeah. especially in that fourth round as a world champion I think he earned at least £80,000 from that one tournament so he's a he's a very good player in that one and then the other guy as well he's top 15 he's earned quite a lot of money as well from all, all of that so it would have been tough but I have the ability to beat them because I I think I've, I haven't played the other guy before because I'm mainly on Xbox but the other guy I think I might have drawn against him once I think I might have been the only time I played him so I would have had a fair shot but obviously it's difficult because competitive it plays it's kind of mostly all on the day sort of thing yeah, which is totally. a tough thing if you're like roughly the same stand it's kind of if you bring out your best game, they bring out the worst, then I might have been able to do something. So it's a it's a difficult one. Whereas I saw some rounds which were had maybe lesser players which got them through more. So it's kind of luck of the draw, which I kind of wish it was maybe seeded or something like that, which it avoided that sort of cluster of players altogether, followed by maybe a slightly lighter draw. But yeah. It's wasn't it is no. But it's, it's kind of, it was kind of an FA Cup style draw anyway to be fair yeah. which obviously is any team like anyone could play anyone like third rounds FA Cup you could get like big clubs playing each other but then you could get two non-leagues playing each other so I kind of get why it was like that because he wanted to kind of recreate that sort of draw Fair enough and obviously just to, just to close really uh, do you ever play football manager? I used to back in when I was about maybe 12, 13, I haven't, haven't played any since. Now, obviously, there's the FM equivalent of what you took part in uh, going on. Yeah. I'm not sure if we've played our first run or not. I've not seen any I information it, if we have. Yeah, it's on Thursday. It's tomorrow. Thursday. Okay, brilliant. This is perfectly timed then because have you got any words of wisdom to Joe Fares, who is taking charge of his town? Uh just obviously represent the badge of pride as always um, and I'm sure he kind of knows what he's doing I'm, I was kind of a bit confused really how you can uh, play I know Joe, I know Joe. If, I know Joe. He's, he's a great lad Yeah, he'll know what he's doing but what, what would you really say to him you've, you've been there you've lived it yeah what would you say um, just kind of just play don't sort of change anything drastically from what you normally play on the day or anything like that think there's like a different tactic that you can do 
or do anything differently, just kind of set up as you usually would. Um, and just, it's kind of hard, just just be yourself, play play the game as per usual. Obviously, it's hard not to think of the fans kind of trying to obviously watch you online. But yeah, there's, there's not much really I can say apart from just obviously do your best um, and just don't change anything from normal. Uh, I'm sure obviously he'll come out with the win. I'm not sure whether Port Vale is a stronger side for because I obviously in co- football sites usually Ipswich would win that. Yeah. Um, but I don't know in terms of football manager whether the person playing for Port Vale is kind of the same. I don't know. So it's, I don't know. So yeah, I, I, don't, I honestly don't know, and I don't know how much Joe really plays the game. I know that he is involved uh, in terms of the research for FM for Ipswich Town, uh, which is why I think he's been chosen. Uh, but yeah, I, I've, you've, you now I've, I've been thinking for the last few days, Port Vale, it should be a walkover, but actually they're not yeah, it's, far away from us, are they, Port Vale, in terms of uh, their League Two, right? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So it's, it's, a, it's a difficult one because obviously... Football clubs in obviously real life, for example, in the competition, I have someone that I talk quite closely uh, in terms of competitive fever who played for Mansfield, um, who are currently 19th for League Two. Uh, he went far, and people thought, How have Mansfield done that? They're only 19th for League Two. But obviously, it's kind of the player behind, obviously, the screen. So, with Port Vale, it might be the same, but it might not be. So it's. No, I think he's an amateur one. I think there's, there there are a few professional players in the tournament. Um, yeah. When I say professional, they're they're players that, that stream it on Twitch and might get the occasional yeah. kind of donation or whatever. Um, but I, they for the Port Vale chap from my because obviously I do a bit of FM myself. He isn't a pro FM player. Uh, okay. He's just a a fan. So a bit like Joe. Really. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it should be an interesting comp- yeah, a competition and game. Are you going to put your head on the line and say a score prediction? Uh, three in a whip switch. Love it. A goal scorers? Uh, I don't know if he's recruited anyone or if it's. Do you know if it's you can't do it's just, just 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 got the be, you've got? Yeah. Yeah. Um, go with Norwood for two, and then we'll go for Alan Judge as well if he's playing him as well at camp or wherever he decides to play. No. I'm not sure what formation he's going to play. Or if you like that, if you know anything. I know what I would play, uh, but I don't know what 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 what, what, yeah. what Joe will, will line up with. So it'd be interesting. But yeah, okay, brilliant. Well, thanks for your time this morning, Josh. It's it's been a real pleasure talking to you and and getting to you know get to terms with FIFA, the professional world of FIFA. I mean, that's just wow. Yeah, you know, there's so much to learn there, and I'm sure we can come back and revisit in a part two because there's still so much we could go through and. I've thoroughly exactly. enjoyed it and I hope you've enjoyed uh, yes, the Yes, thank you. Brilliant. I'll pay you later. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, so uh, do you want to say any words of uh, wisdom to the Ipswich Town fan base ahead for the... Would you... Okay, one, one last question and then we'll, we'll definitely wrap it up. <laughs> would you carry on the current football season or would you say, do you know what, null and void it and we'll, we'll go again in the, in, in, in the, in, in the new season? Uh, probably continue if we can uh, because I know it's, it's people say it's unlikely that we're going to reach the playoffs but I don't know look at us at the start of the season we seem to we seem to thrive if not playing the most and teams kind of were a bit slow so all those teams that had momentum whilst we weren't maybe doing it as well form wise they've obviously that's stopped now so maybe we can I don't know sneak in the playoffs somehow because obviously our fixtures are against bottom league sides, whereas quite a few of the top sides got to play each other. Apart from Portsmouth, we've got to play, so we might have a small, small chance of and getting the playoffs. Back. And Young's got... back, Norwood's back, Lancaster's back. Exactly. So you've got a it. Exactly. So it's. I think it's worth a shot, but it's also unfair on other clubs who have worked so hard for it to be taken away from them with two months of the football season left and what, seven or eight games now? You've worked hard, travelled all those miles, trained all that time, getting up early, playing the games, battled hard, just for it to be taken away. I think it's, it's unfair, but obviously, if it overrides and ruins the next season, then it's 
probably should be stopped because you don't really want to start delaying other seasons because then they'll have a backlog and uh, like plenty of other seasons to come. So it's it's a difficult one, but if it can be played, it would be good. Perfect, perfect. Well, as I said, Josh, Josh, thanks for your time this morning, and uh, yeah, I'll let you know when it's uh, when we release the, the podcast. But thanks for joining us this morning. Yeah, no problem. All Thank you. Cheers, me. mate. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.